Greetings. Welcome. Welcome to another show. I show each up to woman in half. I show each up one free bitch. Sorry. Money fight. I, I forget about it. Um, last show we got this thing running. And so now here it is. We're at 3 volts, 0 amps. Well, it's, it's less than 10 milliamps now. I moved the Hall effect sens sensor back a little. And we can see it as it spins, you get that little light going off of the full wave bridge rectifier. And that light is because there is a magnetic field that's being established and collapsing. And per Faraday's law of induction, there's a displacement current, electric current, that, that happens every time a magnetic field changes contingent upon the magnitude of the magnetic field change per rate of per unit of time so now instead of putting it into there let's see maybe we can put it back into some batteries and and uh, do something with that so i'm going to run this now off some batteries and then we're going to put it in some other batteries now later on i'm going to try to do some formal testing of you know how much are these batteries going down and how much are these batteries charging up but it's actually a pretty complicated question, and as we go along here, we'll get into that. But um, just for starters here, I just want to do something a little bit uh, simpler and um, you know a little bit silly. Can you recharge alkaline non-rechargeable batteries with pulsed electricity? And apparently you can, because I've been doing it, and it's working fine. So I recharged these three little AAA batteries a day ago and put them in this thing and I, I can't get the darn thing to die. I mean, this thing's been on for hours and hours and hours and um, the batteries still aren't fully dead and they were fully dead when I started. So let's just, well, let's talk about battery charging for a minute. So this page from ROM Semiconductor has a um, good write-up on all the different ways that you can charge batteries. So you could use constant current, hold the current constant. I think that's the most common. That's what I have on my battery charger. Um, and then you have constant voltage, or you could have constant power, or you could hold both the current and the, con and the voltage constant, or you could kind of mix and match throughout the charging cycle. But if we scroll down a little further, right before trickle charging, they mentioned pulse charging. And this is applying minute pulses to the charging current. So that's what we got going on with that machine that's, um, that we built. And it's interesting, they say when using lead acid batteries, you have sulfation and efficiency is reduced to redu reduction in storage capacity. Pulse charging is effective as it can su successfully break up these crystalline solids. So if you take a, a lead acid battery that's on its last legs and you hit it with pulse charging, you'll rejuvenate it back to its uh, close to its normal new state or sometimes even better. Now if you try and charge non-rechargeable alkaline batteries, you know, just like your Duracell or Energizer or whatever, with constant current, constant voltage, constant power, anything like that, what will happen is it might accept a little bit of charge, um, won't really like it, it won't accept the charge well, and it'll maybe recharge to 70% or something, 80% of its starting voltage, and it will lose capacity um, every time you do that, and after, you know, two or three times, the battery will usually heat up and it, it'll burst and you'll get some of the alkaline material leak out and so you see this white crud around one of the ends of the battery. However, I've got a sneaking suspicion that you can recharge non-rechargeable alkalines if you hit it with pulse charging. And so that's what we're going to do here today. And there are, like, there's this ReZap device, it's like 60 bucks, and he doesn't say what he's doing or she, um, what they're doing, but they're saying you can recharge alkaline batteries if you use this device. And if I had to guess, you know, Zap from 
the name that this is um, using pulse charging. So what I'm going to do in this in this part is I'm going to recharge just the three little AAA batteries that are running a, a a little flashlight, and I've done that once already, and took the charge beautifully, uh, charged it from you know they were just sitting there they've been sitting in a drawer forever so they were the batteries were all at like 1.1 volts charged it up to 1.5 and the problem I'm having now I mean I've had that flashlight on for hours and I can't get the I can't get the things to go dead so it it's holding a charge well but I want to do it again and you know the question is is it gonna are the batteries gonna rupture after the, like the third charge or something like that so it's something I'll you know be doing in the background multiple times but then also to look at it more formally you have to actually figure out okay what is the capacitance of the battery each time and is it losing capacitance as well so in other words you know if if it charges up to 1.5 volts but it only has like 10 percent of the capacitance left then that's not going to do you any good but we'll talk about that more as the video goes along here so let's just set it up hopefully the batteries are dead enough now let's just set it up and get those charging and then I'll talk about how how we'll look at it more formally um, going forward so I'll just show you one other silly thing in passing um, before we set up the the apparatus um, most of the reason why that light is on i've turned it up to four volts now i still can't get a milliamp reading so it's less than 10 there it goes there's 10 milliamps so we're a little bit under 40 milliwatts so a lot of the reason why that light is on is because you're sh shooting current from the power supply into here and that causes the magnetic field to strengthen and when it collapses for faraday's law of induction there's power that's shot out there now i'm gonna i'm gonna turn the power supply off right now okay you see that and so that's coming from not the power supply that's coming from the magnet swinging past and even though this is the coil that you're putting your power into it's also a generating coil and so the faster that this was spinning the more you'd be getting of that too so that's just uh, a little aside that there's there's actually two reasons for current to be flowing so now we just have the little battery pack from this flashlight and if we put a meter on it it's at 3.38 and there's three of these batteries so they're um, like almost 1.13 so they're still not fully discharged but you know 80 percent of the way discharged so now we'll spin this up with these batteries and then we're going to put the same spike that was going to a light we're going to put it to these batteries okay first let's just spin the thing up go okay it's it's spun up and this thing's kind of rebounding a little on its own now just um, because it's no longer powering the flashlight as I'm saying it worked really well the first time but anyway so this line goes to the positive um, of the bridge rectifier the other line to the negative so the positive you know it's on a bus line there and the negative so when I connect this one to there we'll be shunting the power into this battery pack so let's see what happens that's what happens now it looks a little more impressive to start with just because um, you know it's a they're kind of dead and B you know it's just putting the voltage out there but it'll drop right back down if I remove that so what we need to do is um, let this run for two three hours and run this up to you know 4.5 would be at 1.5 volts but it'll drop so run it up to maybe like 4.8 volts and then you can power your flashlight for hours c'est fini c'est fini mes amis 
I actually, I learned how to speak in Missouri. So if I try to speak French, I go back to a Midwestern accent. Je m'appelle. Je m'appelle Paul. <laughs> I'm sorry. So I let this run overnight. And uh, I added one more because it was charging pretty slow. But overnight, you know, it'll, it's only been sitting about a half hour. So it'll probably settle down around, you know, maybe 4.4, 4.4. Four, five. But that's 1.5 volt per cell right now. And, you know, you wouldn't expect to get that good a charge acceptance when these are not supposed to be able to be charged. So let's put it in a flashlight. Okay, so we put it back in here. And there it is. We have light. I love it. So, we don't really know, though, just how much charge is sitting in those batteries. This thing, you know, last time I just let it go for hours and it still was fine. Um, but what I'm going to do in the next video is, as I mentioned, build an Arduino battery capacity tester. And then we can know down to the milliamp hour what's going in here so then when i do it a second time it's not dying it just doesn't have a good connection um then when i do it a second time i can see is the capacitance dropping off the face of a cliff like you would expect and like you're told happens and does happen if you're doing a constant current charge or is the capacitance holding steady or maybe even improving because the pulse charge is improving the battery conditions battery condition so that's what I'll do next. And, you know, those things will take time. So I'm not going to be doing, you know, every video. I've done it once more over four hours. But I'll, I'll let you know um, as, as things go along whether you can do this. And, you know, what I think will probably happen is maybe one of the batteries will give out and, um, and break after, you know, five or ten charges. But if not, you know, let's just see what it does and, and, um, and see how it goes. So thanks for watching, and if you enjoy it, um, please remember to like and subscribe and comment. Thanks. Take care, everyone. Bye.